exit plans. There's there's a lot to consider here, and unfortunately, there is no set way to go about this because we all have different circumstances. Hopefully, you can all understand that. So, what I've tried to do is break everyone into, I guess, four cohorts, and the cohorts are this. So, we did that poll, and in a very short period of time, ninety people um, did did their um, well uh, participated in that poll. And it generated some very interesting stats. So as you can see here, I'm just going to zoom in a bit because I don't want to go into full, you know, presentation mode because it will just ruin everything. Um, so I, I've separated things in, yeah, into the four cohorts, which I'm going to call alpha to delta. And what I've done is I've taken a low estimate between the range. So in alpha group, we've got a range of basically $500 pot to $20,000 pot. So I've taken a, a really pessimistic low sort of number. So in this cohort, I'm, I'm going to assume people have roughly a thousand dollar pot. Then this cohort, twenty thousand dollars to hundred k. So I've gone meh, thirty, then one fifty, and then a million. And it's and honestly, every time I look at this, I I just giggle inside because standard distribution is everywhere you look at. Um, in every everything you look at it is just absolutely incredible and um <clears throat> and just for shits and giggles i was thinking wait a minute there's roughly 220 people in rt using the exact same uh, percentages for every coat for every you know line here what is the the combined buying power of rt N excluding me and my pots and whatnot just just you you lovely folk so I did basically 220 people and, I, and you know, 6% of this group, I, and I used the lowest amount, by the way. So of each line category, I used $500, 5K, 10K, etc. The lowest estimation came to 37.42 million. I thought, wow. And that's the lowest estimation. That's pretty interesting. So um, that, that's a bit more than I thought. So yeah, just interesting, I thought. Anyway, let's get get to it. So, if, oh no, I'm gonna have to do presentation mode. Oh well, hopefully this doesn't bugger things up. Uh, display settings, swap. There we go. Right. So, um, got the the four different groups here, and I just wanted to make some sort of notes on each group because everyone is in crypto thinking they're gonna be a millionaire in two minutes. Two minutes flat and it's not the case um, this is my third cycle I've been around for a, for a while and I have been all of these these cohorts I know what it's like and so I can say this with you know real hindsight here so for those in cohort a um, you're not going to make a nominal fortune so um, and but remember it's a fact so all the the numbers on the left hand side is what you are now and what I've done is I'm I'm being very conservative here, but I think we're going to make a conservative 20x over the next 18 to 24 months. That sounds ridiculous. I know to a conventional investor, making 20x in two years is just ridiculous. But you know, hopefully, I can elaborate on that later. So what this means is, if you're an alpha and you've got a thousand pound pot right now, thousand dollar pot. So I've con oh my god, I've confused my pounds and dollars. Um, these are all dollar signs, ignore the pounds, sorry. Um, that means by the end of the pot, it, by the end of this cycle, if you play your cards right, you should have $20,000. Okay, so it's great. So you're not going to make a nominal fortune. And I, I think you really need to use this cycle to set yourself up for the next one. And the way to do that, because twenty k or $20,000 in, in the real world doesn't really buy you anything really. You can't buy a house, you can't do stuff really. So you need to use this to up level yourself. Remember value is attracted, sorry, money is attracted to value. Okay, so if you have a company that delivers something valuable, whether it's information or product or a service, then guess what? Money is going to be attracted to that. If you become more value, valuable yourself, as in the way that you think, the, the knowledge that you retain, uh, and, and also what you do with that knowledge, you yourself will be more valuable as a person and therefore money will be attracted to you. Um, except, and the annoying thing here is that that 
that magnetism, that money magnetism takes freaking longer than, than you'd like. It's, you know, it's always, you be valuable now and the money comes in five years time. Unfortunately, it's not a quick thing. So you need to up level your mind yourself and also you need to use it to help you have a nice kickstart in business. And I know you're here in RT thinking, oh, for God's sake, I'm, I just want to learn about trading and crypto, but I, I, I have to stress, business and trading go hand in hand. The moment I got profitable in business, that is the very moment my trading actually did way better. And also business will always act as that, that safety net, that parachute for when you bugger up. And you will bugger up. I always bugger up. Um, and and, for, and I'm, well, thankfully, it's the businesses that get me back on my feet because it just replenishes your purse. It replenishes that pot when you've been a monkey and you've flitted it all away. So up level your mind, get a business because that is the thing that really helps your trading the next pop you're going to be going from thirty thousand dollars to six hundred thousand dollars so this is relatively life-altering if you go from yeah 30k to 600k you're not set up for life though this just makes you comfortable temporarily and with experience you this is this group you will become the most complacent um and and I've spent many years bumming around the, uh, the, this, this level here in the sort of the, the low six figure uh, net worth. I spent many years getting, you know, woohoo, I'm here, I think I've made it. You, you feel like you're Billy Big Balls, Gordon Gecko, whatever. And then you get complacent and you take your foot off the pedal and you realize, shit. Um, and then you just go sideways for, you know, five years, whatever. And again, this is frustrating in itself. So you're not set up for life. It just puts you into the really nice, fun part of that exponential curve. You know how I always say in an exponent. If you look at your net worth and plot it on, let's say an exponent curve, that hockey stick bit where it starts to go vertical, you need to do everything possible to get yourself into that that hockey stick curve part, as in the you know the bend. Um, well, this being you know in the 600k pot, that definitely puts you there because if you were to then you know play it really safe and just put it in somewhere that made you seven percent a year forever then all of a sudden compounding interest will be your best mate for the next 30 years 20 years whatever so but don't get complacent so if you continue with a similar trajectory or not another 20x trajectory but if you just play it right and play you know a relatively safe but you know progressive um way of life then the next five to ten years will be life-changing for sure because that 600k will quickly go into the low millions um as i said yeah don't get complacent so and i you still need to set up that biz um you you really do um whether it's a small one or something big like I think the size of the business that you you need to be mentally gauging yourself for is not based on how much money you're sat on right now because I've seen so many times where someone's got a lottery win or an inheritance whatever you know let's say they've got half a million quid and they go right I'm going to get into business finally and because they look at their pot they think shit okay I'm I'm going to skip all the other the, the smaller businesses I don't want the you know 2 grand a month business or 10 grand a month I, I want you know a chunky business because I got half a million quid here which means I'm entitled I deserve to have a a chunky business so they go out and buy a business or set a business up and and you know let's say they're doing their own startup and what they'll do they will blow half a million quid on their fancy startup I shit you not I know so many close friends and acquaintances that have done this very thing. They've set up a, a startup, some bullshit fancy idea which will never have product market fit, and they will blow half a million in ad spend and end up getting nothing from it. I know that I know this with first hand evidence. The Wealth Action Plan, the WAP, is that very example. The Wealth Action Plan was seeded with £250,000 sterling and I, this is a business I have not executed well. It's done not really, it hasn't really done much. It's got lots of value in it, I, I just haven't executed well. So although a lot of people have said the, the WAP is very helpful, um, yada yada yada, it, 
it's been helpful for clients. It hasn't been helpful as a business. It's not a profitable business. Um, so that was my, I guess, one, <laughs> and that's one example of a business where I've, you know, not turned into very well. I've got another business that has done, you know, not much as well. Where it's so, so what you need to do is if you need to look at business, you have to look at it at it in a rite of passage way so if you've never been in business irrelevant how much whether you've got 10 million quid behind you or 10 pounds behind you you need to start off gauging your mind at the nano business level so the very first thing you need to do is go right what how can i get rid of my job or no 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 that's the that's a negative way of thinking about it what can i do to just generate two grand a month and run a job at the same time so reese tudor davies in our in rt so he was on stage, I believe, at the last cuddle. He's been around for about seven years now. Massive respect for Reese. So Reese has done very well because he went into property investment, and he still works at his full-time job. So he runs a you know you know an, a full-time job. Uh, I can't remember exactly. It's some sort of call center, I think, or IT support. I I, I can't quite remember. Sorry, Reese. Um, but he's run this and then he's built his property portfolio. He's got like seven buy to lets, whatever. So all this time he's been getting his full time wage and his property portfolio and he's now doing really well with trading and investing. Has he quit his job yet? No. <laughs> and I, I find it fascinating that he earns more than his director. <laughs> he earns more than his boss. And, and so and, and I, I love that humble attitude. So so there is a way that you can still do your job and have you know a side hustle um and i know that the term side hustle is oh so boring these days but you've got to think that way if you've never been in business you've got to think what can i do to make two grand a month and it doesn't need to be fancy you know can you set up a service where you you know service a business and just make 200 quid a month from a business you know and then just get 10 clients um or four clients or 500 a month you know all that sort of stuff anyway moving on cohort charlie You've started with $150,000, you're now $3 million. This is actually life-changing in the real world. $600,000 doesn't really buy you much in the real world. You can get your house and whatnot, but $3 million, all of a sudden, it is. Because let's take, you know, average salary of, you know, $30,000 or whatever, 30,000 pounds, I don't know. Um, you've got, you know, let's say 80 to 100 years worth of average salary. <laughs> so... You know, let's say, we'll put that in sterling, you've got two and a half million sterling, let's say after taxes, I don't know, you've left with two million pounds. Um, yeah, you've probably got a good eight, 70 to 80 years worth of av annual salary parked behind you. So you, you, it enables you to have a bit of a breather where you can have a, you know, sort out your, your the roof over your head properly, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So all the things I said about cohort Bravo, you need to still think the same things um, but what this does mean is that you can actually become a full-time investor and just nurse that three million dollars up to ten million you know um, and, and and play it a, a bit safer so capital preservation is now a more important thing than if you're in cohort alpha um, because believe, uh, believe it or not, you will have to do different things depending on which cohort. Because if you st if you, if you are driven by a pre capital preservation mindset and you're an alpha, you're never going to make it. Like you you just won't. Um, you have to have different mindsets to get to the different pots. But when you're in Charlie and Delta, you yeah capital capital preservation really is a thing, and you can do capital preservation strategies and still grow nicely and beat M two and get you know 20 50 percent growth per year i mean hell you just plonk three million in bitcoin and sit on it forever and then that itself is <laughs> gonna do well but in my opinion you've got to use it to insulate yourself from global bollocks which i'll talk about later because life insulation from global bollocks is is very high on my list at the moment and then in, if you're the, the you know, the was it the 11% of the group which are in, or no, is it 7% 7, 7 of the group that are in Delta, you've got mega F off money here. Um, and this is where you need to do the six Gs, insurance, gold guns, grub, ground, gasoline, generator, and then do good in the world. Um, 
so I'll talk about the six G's later when I'll get my tin foil hat out. So these are some considerations. Now let's talk about more specific. So how are we going to exit the market? And really you've got two types of things. You've got profit based exits and market based exits. Now I guess uh, I'm, I'm not going to waste time you know, drawing it all out. I'll, I'll just talk. Um, I'll, I'll just talk about it. So I guess they all have their pros and cons. So let's first of all start with um, profit based stuff. Um, so oh god um, I guess this will it's gonna get confusing if I don't write it down actually um, how can I do this let's exit this and let's get my drawing pen out um, I just wanted to be a okay so first of all let's talk about the pros so in terms of profit based no I can change my mind. I need to type it, it'll be much faster. So if I just do this, control V, make this much smaller. Duh, 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 duh. Um, sorry, pros. Excuse me. Sorry, I've just changed my, I wasn't gonna do it this way, but hey-ho. Um, pivot and all that. Right, blah, blah, blah. Cool, we can type now. Um, I guess the pros with this is that it's an easy target to aim at. Oh dear lordy, what's going on here? Let's make this that way, make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's, um, so it's easier to forward plan because you've got a set target and then you know when you hit that certain target or, so, or when the market hits a certain target or your pop hits a certain level then you can do X or whatever your, your forward plans are. Um, you're not top picking and I guess you're most likely to walk away with some profits. There have been market cycles like you know where you've made low Oh, I've done this and I've seen loads of other people, you know, they make loads of profit in a market and then they walk away with not much because they've tried to top pick. I guess the 2021 cycle is good because I made a lot of money in the 2021 uh, DeFi summer um, and then I only walked away with a little bit of profit uh, because, you know, t Time Wonderland slapped me in the face, whereas Ohm, Olympus Dow was amazing, all that sort of shizzle. So. You're most likely to walk away with some profit, but you may, you know, there, there are a load of cons that also come with this because um, if we now do this, I'm going to try and do this as fast as possible. So cons, I think, I guess they're, they're quite obvious. Um, we'll leave some, maybe lots, <clears throat> on the table. Like, I remember in the 2021 cycle, there were a couple of very prominent, let's say, market gurus or people, and, and they're like, ah, oh, Bitcoin's just hit 30K, I'm out. And they, they sold all profits, all crypto at $30,000 Bitcoin, only to then watch Bitcoin double, or more than double, and then alts did way more than that. Um, and so, yes, they, you know, they, they locked in what, you know, they were evidently doing profit based targeting um, and then they hit, you know, 30K Bitcoin was their target and then they just, they're like, right, I'm done. They walked away the profits, I guess, whatever X up, uplift they were happy with, but they then had to sit on their hands or whether they did sit on their hands or not, I don't know, but they left a lot on the table. And also you're, you're more likely going to suffer from FOMO, aren't you? You've got to look deep down in yourself in your own psyche and how you mentally react to certain external stimuli because some people suffer from FOMO more than others. And if you, let's say, start leaving loads on the table and the market buggers off without you, you know, you do not want to be that person, you know, FOMOing in at 69k <laughs> all time high Bitcoin and for it to, to dump. So you've got to be very careful with, with that con. Um, if you set too high, um, you may get nout, <laughs> or let's just say, do it like that. Um, you may get nothing. 
you know, you could set like you could be all right. Okay, I'm gonna exit when Bitcoin hits two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, what if I I'm correct and it only hits one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty? Like the market starts pulling back slash or no, it actually starts reversing. You think it's a pullback, and before you know it, Bitcoin's back down at eighty, and you're sat there still waiting for your two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin. You may end up just you know giving everything back to the house. Um, and also, if you're in this profit-based thing, you're most likely to uh, wildly mess up. Wildly mess up. I guess those two points are effectively the same thing. Um, so, as I said, there's pros and cons with everything. Let's just make this, just to make it pretty, make it a different color. Um, right. What about market-based stuff? So if we just do this, and let's just delete a whole bunch of these. So I guess the pros of this is, well, I, it's a matter of opinion really, but I think it's the best gauge. Because um, right now, you know, we're let's say we're two years away from the next, wow, shit. Yeah, we're two years away. So if I'm if I'm correct, December, 2025 is when is index for me and we're now here yeah december 2023 so we're two years away so me sat here at two years i you know if i sit you know it's very hard to try and top pick from you know sat all this distance away from you know in two years time so so in my opinion and, and by the way my, my mind changes as the, as new data comes in so i could be wildly wrong it could be a million dollar bitcoin for all i know but um, mar a market-based exit, I think, is the more prudent approach because you are constantly, re well, yeah, you're reacting in a positive sense or you're rejigging your thinking as new data comes in. Um, so I think, yeah, best gauge because, yeah, shit happens, you know, black swans happen, white swans happen, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, your profit target that you set two years ago will quickly go out the window. Um, so um, on most accounts, let's just say. Um, what are the pro? It's um, hmm. What are the pros of it? Uh, market base. I guess that's all. That that's a big one, really. Um, I guess you're most likely to exit. <laughs> nearer the top but again it just depends on how well you can read the top um, and you know I spend every waking moment looking at crypto and markets and all that and I still screw up so <laughs> it's yeah the mark the mother market will, will hurt you now there are a lot of cons with market-based exiting because it's easy to miss read slash misinterpret market signals um, I guess it's very similar easy to get caught up in the noise easy to get misled by price action because the market does like setting a certain pattern up for you to then go oh yeah this is definitely gonna happen and then the market goes ha got ya so <clears throat> and then I guess easy to um, I don't know blindly follow a market guru of some sort you know um, and I it, it, it's weird because you're here and are you're here to learn in the realistic trader and in some ways or not I am the head of RT so to speak and you I, I guess some people it is easier to just abdicate or delegate all of their market thinking to me and I, I it's fair to say you know if I'm spending every waking moment looking at crypto and I've got a full-time job blah 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 I'm going to just defer to Simon's judgment because I don't have time to look at the markets he does yada 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 and you know that would be a fair shout and by the way I've got a lot of friends ha that have done that in the past and have done very well and they're just like look so I'm just I'm gonna do what you do and to be fair those that have done that have actually done well um, 
coincident or not coincidentally, on the other hand, I know a lot of people who have part listened to me and part listened to others or part listened to this themselves and have actually ended up in in terrible pain where there have been people in RT where where they've you know they've listened to me sometimes and they've happened to just copy my bad moves <laughs> and then just completely ignored me when I've made my good moves so it it, it is a cluster mess it really is hard um so I guess, yeah, this is where your own judgment comes in, really. I there is no perfect answer here. Um, but like with anything, I think the world is not a binary place. The world is a very complex mesh of variables and, and complex systems. Like, like, a, like a weather system, the market is, you know, very complex. Um, and just like it's nigh and impossible to predict the weather in four months time in Norwich or whatever the market sometimes is very much like that however with meteorology sometimes it is bang on obvious what's going to happen if I see a massive storm cloud tracking towards my city uh, at a rate of you know five knots and it's you know picking up size and mass well surely it's obvious you can then work out right it's going to hail and snow and rain or just pre precipitate over Norwich in this time frame. Like, you know, <clears throat> you're not reading the future. You're not Mystic Meg. You're just seeing, you know, a weather pattern moving over over to you, towards you, etc. And the markets can sometimes be like that. So, so in my opinion, like like with anything, you've got to do a blend. I, I, so it's not profit versus uh, profit base versus market base exits. I think you need both. And, and in my opinion, this is where, you know, this is what I'm doing. I, I, I will, I'm going to be doing a, a blended approach. So, as I said, everyone has different circumstances. I'm doing a blend. As I've got hindsight now, this is my third proper full crypto cycle. I was dibbling and dabbling, you know, 2012, 2015. Uh, in fact, when I was dabbling in 2012 and 2015, I was a hater. I was a crypto hater and I was only dibbling and dabbling in it to try and prove that crypto was bullshit. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't have much skin in the game and I always cringe <clears throat> when I see people on Twitter going, hey, listen to me because I got in at Bitcoin at ten dollars or i got into casper at 0 0.0002 of a dollar or, or whatever but and you know what i can say that as well i could say i got into bitcoin at twenty dollars in 2012 or wh whatever it was back then but was i really in it no i was dicking about dib dab i was a market dabbler i didn't have size in it you know everyone everyone can say that you you can really only say you got properly into the market when you had proper size in the market as in relative size for yourself right um you know whether once you've got you know at least 10 percent of your net worth in crypto that's when you're starting to taking it seriously um <clears throat> and with my empirical hindsight i um and missing you know i've never called the, the ultimate high or the ultimate low just like many most people out there um i think yeah the, the blend is the best way so i think what or not i think this is what i am doing i will be doing profit based targets to lock in real world stuff um does that make sense wait taking some profits to lock into the real world using profit based targets yeah okay sorry i have a bit of a word a mouthful there and then the remaining pot i'll be doing a market based exit so for me um, I guess lifting up my skirt I'm in Delta pers uh, sorry uh, yeah I'm in Delta at the moment so <clears throat> as in this cohort here so I'm in the low millions and therefore I'm personally looking you know in two years time 20 mil plus plus which is is a, is a bit scary right <laughs> and in fact every no matter what cohort you're in if you like you could be a billionaire and if you were to suddenly 20x your net worth it's going to be scary so yeah if you if you're here with a thousand dollars and in two years time you're you're going to be sat on twenty thousand dollars that's a massive deal for you and it just like 
if a billionaire goes from 1 billion to 20 billion that's a massive deal for that person as well so yeah um, you know it for all of us if we all hit 20 x's over the next two years this we're all going to be feeling we're, we're going to be experiencing imposter syndrome we're going to feel that you know our our personal monetary thermostat is way out of whack um you yeah and then you're going to be in a, a fear you will be in a fear state i promise you this every single time i've had a a, a, a leapfrog jumping of net worth for the next six to 12 months, you are a scared person. I promise you this. Speak to any, you know, look at any interview of a lottery winner or someone that's just got shitloads of inheritance. They are in fear state for the, at least the next year because they're just crapping their pants that they don't just blow it all. You know, that they don't just blow it up and just lose everything. So we're all going to be in a state of fear over the next couple of years. <laughs> so we'll, we will spend a lot more time on, on, I guess, money management and life, you know, wealth preservation, you know, uh, towards the end of this bull market.